Manually rotating your camera to frame a target can be time consuming, frustrating, and it's usually not perfectly repeatable. For example, if you want to collect more data on a target that you imaged a few months ago. So that's why when ZWO announced their CAA camera angle rotator, I bought one to try it out and see how it performs. Now I'll be using the ASI Air for connecting here, but uh, you might be using a PC or using Nina as the software. Now whatever range I want to rotate the camera to, for example, if I use this dial here to set it to 90 degrees, or I can just type in 90 degrees here as well to make it faster. Any cables um, that are behind the CAA closer to the camera that's what we'll be rotating uh, the CAA cable or anything in front of that will not be rotating so we don't have to worry about those click rotate okay so this right here is the nebula that I'll be imaging NGC 6914 and I'll just quickly input my telescope and camera information so we can see how it will look so it'll look something like this and uh, now I want to rotate it to best frame the nebula so these three globules are visible. So looking in, in Nina here, if I click determine rotation from camera, it'll take a picture, plate solve it, and figure out what the current rotation of the camera is. So uh, that's what it looks like right now. It's 271.95 degrees. Now, if I want to rotate it, I just use this slider and wrote and set it to something like 330 degrees. Now I just click this arrow and click slew center and rotate. And the program will automatically rotate the camera. Here are some of the images that I took using this telescope. Now, uh, this was the hydrogen alpha image that I had taken while testing the CAA. And one of the really cool things you can do is if you have two telescopes, uh, you can use the CAA to rotate uh, the camera on one telescope to perfectly match the orientation of the other telescope. And that way you can match the framing and then you can combine data from two different telescopes. Um, now, this was with my C11 from my backyard. This is the hydrogen alpha data. So I could do that from my light polluted location. But then I took some more data with a telescope at a dark site. Uh, this is the RGB data and then I combined that with my hydrogen alpha data. And uh, since the orientation is perfectly matched, it was super simple to combine the data. And uh, with my C11, you can see there are no diffraction spikes on the stars, but with the RGB data, there were some diffraction spikes on that telescope just because of the design. Uh, but the data matched perfectly, and this is the image I got. This is the result for NGC 6914. Um, and uh, yeah, it looks absolutely beautiful. And then one of the other test images I had taken, this was also with my C11, and uh, this is uh, Messier 51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. Uh, and this is RGBHA and 44 and a half hours of data. And uh, I think that looks quite good for being taken from, uh, you know, from my Bortle 6 to 7 backyard. And lastly, I put the CAA on my refractor, the 60 millimeter FRA 300. And I got this image of Comet Lemon. And I used the CAA to orient uh, the image the way I want it so I could capture as much of the tail as possible uh, with the comet going diagonally across the frame. So overall, it performed very well. It met all my expectations. And the user interface was quite intuitive in Nina as well as on the ASI Air. So now I can get data on targets throughout the year and then I can just load the old image, plate solve it and get the exact same rotation as what I had before so I can continue to collect data on the same targets year after year if I want to. In some cases, I've collected as much as 150 hours of data on a single target. So being able to repeatedly rotate my camera to the exact same orientation as last time uh, is really helpful to me. So again, a CAA is not something that's essential. You can always just manually rotate your camera by hand. Uh, but if you do collect a lot of data on various targets over a long period of time, uh, then I do find it to be a helpful tool. And if you do decide to buy one, please use the links in the description of this video as that helps out this channel at no cost to you. And if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below and I'll do my best to respond. Thank you for watching and clear skies.